Hello and welcome. Jiguli Travel is greeting you from Liverpool with your guest Man Neo. In this video, we will dive into some of the most famous pubs of Liverpool that one way or another are linked to the Beatles. You have lots of pubs in Liverpool, all different in character, with some claiming that the Beatles drank or played there at some point. The lads performed in many small venues in and around their hometown. But the venues they performed in were often not the places where they enjoyed their drinks. Take the self-guided walk to see some of the legendary pubs that John, Paul, George and Ringo either frequented or played in. Have a pint and ask people questions. You'll get some very entertaining answers and more than a few stories. We will be using GPS My City app for this pub crawl. GPS My City offers 8 different walks in Liverpool covering museums, famous places and of course the Beatles. Today we will be doing the Beatles pub crawl. So grab yourself a cold brew and let's get into it. Our first stop, world famous The Cavern Club. Opened on 16th January 1957 is a jazz club and later becoming a center of Liverpool's rock and roll scene in the early 1960s. The Cavern Club became closely associated with the Mersey Beat music genre and famously regularly played host to the Beatles in their early years, initially as part of the weekday beat sessions at lunchtime. The Beatles made their first appearance at the club after returning to Liverpool from Hamburg, Germany, where they had been playing at the Indra and the Carsey Keller clubs. There and then, on Tuesday, February 9th, 1961, they were signed up as the club's resident lunchtime group, working in alternation with the Gary and the Pacemakers. Narrow, cobbled, uneventful Matthew Street thus began to lead an unexpected new life in daylight hours. At noon, Mondays to Fridays, a four abreast line would begin to form at the cavern's hatch hike entrance, growing by the minute until it stretched back past the warehouses and delivery trucks and piled up fruit crates. 80 odd yards to the junction with Whitechapel. Inside, there was no security whatsoever and no alcohol was sold either at lunch times or at night, only coffee and soft drinks. From 1961 to 1963, the Beatles made 292 appearances at the Cavern. By summer of 1963, Beatlemania was sprouting across England, and with girls demanding to see the Beatles and screaming just to get a glimpse of them, the group had to hide or sneak into concerts. And the small club could no longer satisfy audience demand. So on 3rd of August 1963, the Beatles made their final appearance at the Cavern. Just a minute's walk away, there's our second stop, the Grapes Pub. One of the main reasons why British pubs have such peculiar names is that the first pub signs were pictorial, as many of the customers could not read at the time. These were some of the earliest logos. A Roman taberna, for example, was marked by a vine or perhaps a bunch of grapes, and there are plenty of pubs called the Vines the grapes or the bunch of grapes around, especially in cities associated with the wine trade. Liverpool has seemingly dozens of grapes, the best known probably being the one in Matthew Street, diagonally opposite the world famous Cavern Club, where the Fab Four used to refresh themselves before or after a gig. Grapes was guaranteed to be always crowded, particularly as the Cavern was an alcohol-free venue. Although it doesn't look the same as it did in Beatle days, the grapes on Matthew Street is clean, has sufficient amounts of comfortable seating available, as well as karaoke. One moment you can be listening to someone strangling animals with their voice, and by the very next song feel like you've stumbled upon a singer who might be the next big thing. All the while, people out for the evening are content to just carry on supping their Guinnesses and catching up like it's no big deal. Located on a corner of Matthew Street, there's the White Star. No trip to Liverpool is complete without a visit to the back room of the White Star, one of Matthew Street's longest running pubs, traced back as far back as 1880 and named after the shipping company of Titanic fame. A crowded locals pub on match days, otherwise a quiet boozer housed in a traditional Victorian building. It features lots of Liverpool memorabilia and a connection, obviously, to the Beatles. 
The pub is known as the place where the Fab Four played their first gig, also where Alan Williams and Bob Wooler, the original DJ of Cavern Club across the road, would pay their artists. Every once a while, the Beatles would come here to receive their money after their Cavern performances, and in that back room, there was a wall decorated with Beatles memorabilia, known as the Beatles back wall. The bar staff are friendly, and the ales on sale are top class, all well kept and promptly served. Oftentimes, there are visitors to Liverpool drinking alongside locals who want to share their personal experiences and memories of the Fab Four. Ten minute walk away heading south, we will get to the Jacaranda. A famed music bar founded by the first manager of the Beatles, Alan Williams. The Jacaranda, or simply Jack, has been an important part of the Liverpool music scene since 1958, another must-see spot on any Beatles tour. It is the place where the band used to rehearse, play and hang out when they were called the Silver Beatles. As soon as the four met Alan Williams, they hounded him for a chance to play at the venue. Alan agreed with one condition they must paint that place. John and Stuart painted ladies' toilets, and the band would start rehearsing in the basement. After a dozen or so performances at Jacaranda, for which they were paid with free drinks, Alan became their manager and booked their first Hamburg tour. Reopened and refurbished in 2014, the Jacaranda has once again put itself at the epicenter of unsigned music of the city, with the famous open mics on every Thursday and Sunday. There are live bands playing every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. Located at the bottom of the Seal Street, there's Blue Angel Nightclub. Especially popular amongst university students, this Liverpool institution, known locally as the Raz, is revered by many as equally as it is feared and loathed. Historically a jazz club, it was at one point owned by the Beatles' first manager, Alan Williams and served as setting for the band's first audition for a tour outside of Liverpool, but also for the band's original drummer, Pete Best. During his time managing the club, Williams refused entry to Bob Dylan and is said to have ejected Judy Garland. Nowadays, Blue Angel is the type of place where you can have a good dance and enjoy a few drinks, granted you have a few hours and a reasonable number of friends. It is not the kind of club you spend your entire night in if you're planning to stay out for more than a few hours. In essence, the Raz works as either a starter club or an end of the night last resort kind of place. To enjoy a few drinks with friends as well as a guilt-ridden dance to cheesy pop music. Tucked away in the middle of Rye Street is our next stop, Ye Cracky Pub. A proper and spoiled backstreet pub Cracky trades on Beatles connections, like many other places in Liverpool. Actually, its artistic history goes a little further back. It was home to the Mercy Beat scene, a group of poets and artists who aimed to emulate the late 1950s New York Beat scene. That scene nurtured the Beatles and others, but the only real Beatles connection is that as a louche, leather-jacketed student at a nearby art college, John Lennon used to hang out here to sit at the feet of Adrian Henry, Arthur Dooley and other poets and artists. His girlfriend Cynthia, who was also an art student, started joining him later. Still full of unconventional arty types seeking inspiration in some local brew, the cracky is much more than just Lennon's old hangout. It boasts a great jukebox to put some tunes on, a magnificent secluded beer garden, Grab a pint, walk around, absorb the old world ambience, and then talk to the locals who frequent here. You will be warmly accepted. Our last stop, the Philharmonic Dining Rooms. One of John Lennon's favorite pubs during his youth. In fact, when asked about the price of fame, he once quipped, not being able to buy a pint at the fill. As for Paul McCartney, he performed here both as a young musician and during an impromptu concert in 2018. Built in 1900 and a public house for its entire existence, 
The Phil, as it's known locally, is recognized as one of the most spectacular pubs in the UK, specializing in fine wines and real ales from Scotland. It stands on the corner of Hope Street and Hardman Street, diagonally opposite Liverpool's Philharmonic Hall. One of several public houses added to the city in Victorian times, the Phil stands out due to its unusual exterior, with an apparently random series of bay windows and lofts, all rendered in ashlar stone. The interior boasts wood paneling to rival any first-class saloon on the great transatlantic ships, while gentlemen's urinal stalls are carved from a very rare type of rose-colored Irish marble. The Grade 2 listed pub's main entrance is surrounded by a black and gold wrought iron gate. We hope you enjoyed this Beatles pub crawl travel guide and we are looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care guys!